Hi, this is Tom Stone and landlords, do you know what you're able to charge tenants for and what you're not able to charge tenants for? Because I give you a warning, it's just changed. So I thought I'd do a quick update so that you know what you can and can't charge for and what the rules are around it. But I'm gonna start with last year, you probably remember the tenant fee ban came into force. Now, DIY landlords, self-managing landlords, and letting agents, you will definitely remember the tenant fee ban. That was a terrible situation for everybody. Effectively, it meant that letting agents and landlords couldn't charge tenants for anything, in a nutshell. Stuff like referencing, applications, administrations, inventories, check-ins, check-outs, all of those things that are a service that cost time and effort and resource by a landlord and or a letting agent were no longer able to be charged for. Now in that instance, unfortunately, in a lot of cases for letting agents, the landlord picked up the bill there. Um, but for DIY landlords, where does the cost go? It still takes a good few hours to do an inventory properly. It takes a good few hours doing all of the referencing and processing applications, admin, all of those things that are provided for a tenant, that takes time and effort. And these people, certainly in a letting agent, staff have to be paid. And with landlords, yeah, okay, you're getting the return on the rent, but that's the rent, but landlords will still have to put all of that time and effort in for no return. So unfortunately, landlords initially picked up the bill, which then led to rents going up and so actually the tenant fee ban increased rents and was to the detriment of tenants in my opinion. But doesn't matter about my opinion, it's done, it happened, it's gone. Now they've changed it again. So as of June the 1st, any existing tenants could not have any fees applied. In a nutshell, there are certain little exceptions, but nothing major. Actually, tenants are really doing all right in this whole scenario. And I'm gonna give you an example. There was a landlord that I've worked with before, but he's a self-managing landlord. He's got six properties of his own. Uh, all of them, when they moved in, he charged them for the inventory, which is a cost to him. And he also charged them a checkout fee. Now, again, agree or disagree with that. That's what he did um, because that is a lot of time and effort. So he charged all of his tenants when they moved in an inventory fee and a checkout fee. So what's a checkout? Uh, it's simply where you go back to the property when the tenant's moving out to do another inventory against the old inventory. It's quite time consuming, but it checks to see what damage has been done by the tenant. So therefore you can start negotiating on the deposit deductions and so on. Anyway, so he charged all of his tenants a, uh, a checkout fee. So now he's in the position where the tenant, if he's gonna do that checkout, which he, he is going to, of course, the tenant's entitled to that checkout fee back, right? Because the service is being delivered after the ban has come into force. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. That's the way it sticks out to me. But one of his tenants has come back to him and said, you can't charge me for that. I want that money back. And now, look, there's gonna be a lot of media around this. This is the new PPI, all of these tenant fee bans and all of that sort of stuff. So that landlord is now at risk because a tenant technically is gonna go back, to, all of his tenants actually, are gonna go back to him and say, I want my money back. So is that right? Is that wrong? Well, it's kind of irrelevant, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's now his risk. So he's actually decided to refund the tenants, whether it's right or wrong, refund the tenants for the checkout, um, which is gonna mean that rents are gonna go up again because everybody needs to remember that a rental property is an investment. You've got to make a return on the investment. If you're not making a return on the investment, you need to make adjustments so that you do. So if you're now putting an extra three, six, eight, ten hours into your property investment, that has to produce a return. So I actually think this is gonna be a further detriment to tenants, uh, which is a shame because before all of this crap, the rental market was doing quite well. The problem was a few idiot landlords who were extorting tenants and a few idiot letting agents who were really extorting tenants. I heard of letting agents charging tenants 2,000 pounds for application fees. What's wrong with you? 
It's you guys that have screwed this up for everybody else. So well done you. And there are landlords in the same boat. You guys have messed it up for everybody by thinking that this is a, a cash cow and being too greedy. Well, you've messed it up for everyone. So now landlords, letting agents, we can't charge tenants, but we still have to provide the same service. So, um, so well done you. Anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent, but the message I'm trying to give you here is that last year when the tenant fee ban came in, you weren't able to charge new tenants moving into new tenancies, uh, any fees for things like referencing and all of those those things. Well, now that applies to existing tenancies too. So there's now very minimal risk to a tenant who decides not to pay their rent or to pay it late, just to pay whenever they want because landlords and letting agents can't charge them late fees or anything like that. Now, all right, you can charge a percentage above the Bank of England base rate. It's minimal, it's pennies. It's certainly not a deterrent. So if you're a landlord and your tenants paid your rent late and you charge them five quid, 10 quid, 20 quid, whatever it may be, you can't do it anymore. It's crazy because it gives the tenant no incentive to make sure their rent is paid on time. Really what we're saying here, since that tenant fee ban, there's not really a massive incentive for tenants to make sure their rent is paid on time. In fact, do you know, I just heard of a landlord the day before yesterday. I know him because I'm helping him find another investment property to add to his portfolio, but he, um, he's got a tenant. He's been in there for eight years. So pretty good, you'd be happy with that. Never had a problem until the beginning of this year, uh, January time, the tenant fell into, and okay, I understand, financial hardship. Now, um, the tenant started making rent payments late, first of all, then he missed one, then he caught up with it gradually. But now he just pays late and the, the landlord has chased the tenant and the tenant's just said, well, it doesn't really matter if I pay late or not, does it? There's no charge. And the landlord, that hurt the landlord because now he doesn't know when he's getting his rent and what do you do about that? Well, you can't charge them. You can threaten the charge. You could go through the eviction process. Might I add right now we're in lockdown, so he can't even do that. The tenant doesn't give a toss. The tenant doesn't care. He's not gonna get charged. Now, right, you could argue the other way that the tenant is then gonna be become a bit undesirable. So at first opportunity, the landlord may well decide to remove him from the property. Um, but that's the, that's the problem now. First of all, you've got tenants that just have no commitment or obligation to take a property once they've put a, a holding deposit down. And second of all, when they're in the property, there's no real deterrent against paying the rent late. So it's not going well for landlords here. So as a landlord, what's happening? What's the knock-on effect? Well, number one, you're now gonna get much more stringent referencing processes, meaning, Tenants that don't pass with flying colors and are whiter than white, cleaner than clean, are not gonna be able to move into properties. It's really gonna put a strain on the tenants that uh, may have had problems in the past, but have turned around, they're all right. They might be all right, but they're gonna have problems in the near future with renting properties, such a shame. Anyway, look, I've ranted on a little bit there, but what I wanted to get across was now if you're a DIY landlord, a do-it-yourself landlord, or a self-managing landlord, or you're a letting agent that you're, you're watching this to, or listening to this, then you cannot charge any existing tenancies, tenants within the tenancies, any fees. Um, so whether you like it or whether you don't like it, I'd love to know. Please let me know what your opinion is on all these tenant fee bans that have come into place. Please let me know. Um, look, drop me a message or comment below. And actually, if you uh, if you send me an email, I will always reply. But if you want a bit of advice on what you can do to help your situation, then please let me know. I always try and help anybody I can. I just do this for free. You know, this is kind of my day job, <laughs> if you like. So hopefully that helps clear everything up. Don't charge any tenant fees and everyone will be all right.